Before applying any sort of granite fills to our design, we have to make sure that our gray scales are correct first. Um, if we look at this particular stone, we've got 30% gray. We can see down here it shows the CMYK values of 0, 0, 0, and then 30 for the black. So it's 30% black. And I usually will go over here to the side, and we've got 10% black, 20% black, and 30% black. These are the only three uh, values that we really need for granite fills. 10% black will be frosted color, 20% black will be rock pitching, and 30% black is polish. So if we wanted this stone to show up as polished, we need to have it 30% black. That way when we come over here to our granite fills and choose a fill, it will go ahead and fill that in to be polished here. This was 10% before and so it was frosted and then down here was 20 percent and so it ended up being rock pitched. If we wanted to switch that around and say we wanted the entire die to be frosted we could simply click on it go back to 10 percent on both that and the margin here and then we would just refill it and this time because it's 10 percent it's going to fill it in all frosted. If we wanted the base to be all polished we do the same thing uh, we could even take off this margin I'll just hit delete and then fill this in with 30 percent and if I refill it it would then show up as all polished so depending on what we want polished what we want rock pitched and what we want to show as frosted um, depends on these three 10 20 and 30 percent another way to do this is up here with the color chooser instead of the percentage values um, I've just named them here so we've got frost rock pitch and polish but they really just correlate to the 10 20 and 30 percent I've also put in a dark gray which uh, can be used for showing dark gray lithochrome uh, black lithochrome and then white lithochrome as well um, one thing with using the color chooser, a benefit to that is that you can use the keyboard shortcuts which are listed over here. So if I wanted this to be polished, instead of going over here or over here, I can just hit 6 on my keyboard and it would go ahead and fill that in with 30% and then I can fill it in and it would be polished. So if you memorize the 4, 5, and 6 um, in addition to the 3, 7, and 8 for keyboard shortcuts, uh, it's very simple to go ahead and apply what you want to do. Um, the downside to doing it this way is that it's only going to allow you to change the fill and not the outline. Um, typically when using the shape builder I have it set to no outline anyway but if you were to build your own shape like a rectangle or a panel like this um, it's automatically got a black outline applied to it um, and so to get rid of that outline you have to use the palette over here and you right click on any color to change your outline or right click on this swatch to get rid of the outline altogether. Um, the color chooser doesn't allow you to change outlines, it only changes the fills which is okay um, since most of the time I'm not using outlines anyway um, so there's benefits both ways whether you use the palette or whether you use the uh, the color chooser here. I typically will design in grayscale values first and then do colors at the very end uh, just because as you work and import and bring things in um, from different places they're not going to come in automatically colored and so you end up with uh, a mixed design of colors and, and not colors. So I will usually just do uh, grayscales at first and if you want to get back to grayscales after you've applied uh, granite colors all you do is go way down to the bottom here of the docker and hit the fill grayscale button and that will go back to your grayscales. Um, so to get back to where we were before where we had uh, this was rock pitched I'll come over here to 20 percent and so now we've got rock pitched. We also had a margin on there before. I can go ahead and hit undo if I want and get back to where we were or I could just grab my rectangle tool and draw it back in. 
Um, we've got a 48 by, I'll just do an inch and a half margin this time. Um, as we see, it's brought down a little bit from the top there. So if I hold down Shift and select the base, I can hit T on the keyboard, and that will then align it to the top of the base. Then I can take that and left click on 30% black to fill it in with 30% black. I can also right click on this to get rid of the outline if I wanted to. One of the things that I like to do is to show rock pitching even on the sides. It's not built into um, the shape builder yet, so you have to do it manually, but you can come in and just draw in some rock pitching. And I'll connect that from there to there. And then I need to fill that in with 20% gray again. So I'll fill it in. And once again, I like to go ahead and take off the the uh, outline by right-clicking on the swatch there. Um, and then I'll normally just mirror this over to the other side. So hitting M on the keyboard or hitting the mirror button. Since there's nothing behind it, it asks what to mirror off of. So then I click on here, and it will mirror on that. And then I can do the same thing for the die. And if it's going to be a polish 2 or polish 3 die, I can go in and draw some rock pitching here. Now it's possible to go ahead and draw rock pitching and save it you know, as another file and then you can just import that pitching. Um, but I'll just do this quickly to show anyway what it looks like to have rock pitching. And I'll mirror that again over to the other side. And we'll just do it this way so that it will simulate a polish 3. So it's polished on the front, top, and back, but not on the sides. And the base is polished on the margin, but not down here on the bottom. Now if we choose a granite fill and click yes to fill in everything, you'll see how it then adds the rock pitching over here on the edges. And I think it, it ends up looking really nice that way. If I wanted to add an epitaph into the polish here, um, I could select the text that I've already got and I'm just going to drag it up holding down control so that it constrains and stays centered and while I'm holding my left mouse button and moving it up I will right click with my mouse and that's going to make a copy so I right clicked and let go of the button so that it turns into the copy and then as soon as I let go of my left mouse button then it drops that copy right there then I can select my text tool and swipe the text, or I usually will just hit Control A to select all, and then I can type in my text. So, like I could say, Beloved Mother. Now it needs to be a little bit smaller, um, so I would usually come up here and even choose a different font, possibly Vermarco, and then shrink this down. I can either type it in one inch, or I've got it set in the defaults. If I hold down control on my keyboard and then hit 8 or 2 on the numeric keypad, it will go down and up in quarter inch increments. Every time I hit the keyboard button, you'll see it go up or down by quarter inch. So I can go to 0.75 rather easily, 1 inch, 1.25. So I'll just go down to three-quarter inch text here. Now because we're blasting into the polish and this is a colored stone we probably wouldn't want to do black and so I can either click the white over here or I can come up to white here or I can simply hit three on the keyboard and it would fill it in with white. Once I've got it on this side I can hit M to mirror it to the other side and then I could type in whatever I wanted to put here loving husband. That's a very simple way to uh, to color your text in with white to show that it would be done there in the polish. And then just to show what it would look like here to grab our text and change it to dark gray instead of black. Just got a little bit different look to it there. Not as stark black. I'd have to do the same thing for each individual piece of black that we've got. 
uh, which is why it's easy to go ahead and just use the keyboard shortcut every time. That way you just choose what you want and hit 7. Choose what you want and hit 7. Choose what you want to change and hit 7. You can also swipe it. I made sure that I didn't select the entire thing because then it would fill in the inside of our panel there and that's not what we want, we just want the text and the outside of the panel. And that's showing it um, with dark gray and white using color chooser to be able to select those colors.